Folding phones are the wave of the future. Well, at least according to Android phone manufacturers, that is. Whether they are the future or not, I was intrigued enough to buy the Samsung Z Flip 3 and give it a shot. So after 48 hours, how is it holding up? What are the hot features and what are the not features? <laughs> I couldn't even say that whole thing with a straight face. Let's find out. And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up, everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Look, I am enough of a gadget nerd to appreciate when a company tries to do something new and innovative, which is exactly what drew me to this phone in the first place. Honestly, I am quite happy with my iPhone 12 Pro Max, and phones normally aren't something that gets me all that excited. I've talked about this before. Cell phones... Yeah, they're all right, but eh. But give me a future flipping tricorder phone, yes please. Quick notes for this video, one, nobody provided me this phone. I bought it myself, so Samsung is definitely not sponsoring these impressions, which should be made more obvious by the fact that I already said who the sponsor of today's video is, Squarespace. Two, yes, I am a pretty big fan of what Apple makes, but I'm also a pretty big fan of Windows and other tech companies too. I don't consider myself particularly married to any one system, I use what works for me at any given time. And if this is your first time hearing about the Z Flip 3, let's quickly cover the specs and ordering options to bring us all up, you know, let's get all on the same page. The Z Flip 3 comes in a lot of different color options. I've personally got the matte black version, but really there are only two main variants. There is the 128 gigabyte model for $999 and the 256 gigabyte model for $1,049. Yes, you'll see them for $499 on the Samsung website, but that includes trade-in value, so not something that everybody is going to be able to swing. $999 and $1049 at the base. For that money, you'll get the 8-core Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 as the engine, a 3300 mAh battery, a 6.7-inch folding display with a fast 120Hz refresh rate, and an additional little 1.9-inch cover screen on the front to check notifications. Specs are pretty eh. Not these specs, all specs. I hate all specs. So let's get into the things that I've liked and disliked about this admittedly cool little phone. Obviously, you can't start off a list like this without talking about the folding display itself. I really like it. It's not perfect, and we will talk about some aspects of it that I don't like later, but just the technology itself to have a screen that is so malleable that's darn cool. Plus, I like just how vibrant and alive things look on this display. I've watched a ton of YouTube so far on this phone, and maybe it's just because I'm always looking at a computer monitor anymore, but these colors are so vibrant, and it's got some legit contrast with very deep blacks at all times, and that's very noticeable when watching videos. I haven't yet had a chance to watch too much HDR content on this phone, but I imagine that it's going to look stunning when I do. I mean, can you even see it? Like, look at this from right here. This screen looks amazing. The fast refresh rate is also a nice to have. It's never really been something that I consider as a necessity on a phone, and I'm not sure how much it adds to this phone in particular, but if you do play a lot of games and you need that extra smoothness or that extra fastness in the refresh rate, then sure, I'm glad you've got access to it here. I just think, if we're gonna boil it all down, I think it's incredible to have basically a pack of cards that I can take phone calls on or check notifications with, and then I turn that card deck into a pretty stacked phone with a ton of screen real estate to watch movies, write messages, respond to tweets, you know, all the normal phone stuff. I've considered phones to be pretty meh anymore because they're all just glass slabs with different software and their physical functionality hasn't really changed all that much in the last few years. But this is very reminiscent of my old flip cell phones and I do think this is novel enough that I could see this as a very useful piece of technology. And there are apps that can function with what Samsung calls flex mode, which can turn this into like a dual screen little computer and some other very unique ways to use a phone. One of the cool things that I did was I was able to do a video call with my wife with the phone just supporting itself and the front facing camera picking me up. Now no, this is not a perfect angle. If you don't always carry around a phone stand or you don't feel safe leaning your phone up against a book or other object, this is a neat little piece of functionality. This reminds me of my HTC Evo back in the day that had a little kickstand built out of the back of it. I really like this. The screen isn't perfect though, and my main complaint thus far is the thing that makes it so unique. Because of the fold, you have this little crease in the middle. While looking at this, it doesn't bother me in the slightest. I don't mind notches, I don't mind punch outs, I don't really mind bezels all that much. And so when looking at the phone, 
I don't really see the crease. I mean, if you are looking, like when the phone's turned off, you can see the little indentation, the little ripple right here. But it's not something that really stands out when in use. But what I really don't like about this is how it makes the screen feel. The crease is right where my hand naturally rests when I am trying to scroll through websites. And I just, I don't like how it feels. Like I can feel that bump every time I try to scroll. And this is probably a personal thing, but it's driving me crazy. I do feel like I could probably get over this in time and maybe like a notch or a cutout Physically, the use would fade into the background, but in the past two days, it is constantly on my mind. If we're still talking about displays, I do really also like this front screen. I think the big takeaway for a device like this is it really needs to work in both modes, because if you need to have it open all the time, well then what is the use of having a folding phone, right? I'll just have a regular phone all day long. But here, I think the front screen works really well for giving notifications. I like that it is also, can you even see that? I like that it is also a touch screen and you can customize it a few different ways with different widgets that are already installed in the phone. When we talk about the main screen again though, there is something else that I dislike. And it's not really the screen's fault, but this phone is so long that using it in landscape mode for apps or videos, it's just not the most aesthetic design. You'll get either a huge bezel on the side of the apps, which is not a big deal, or you'll get apps on the main screen that won't turn even though the app feels like it should. I feel like this operating system would probably work better with a wider display. Maybe that's a, again a personal thing where I don't like these very narrow displays, but I think width would have helped this screen. The next thing that I've liked is the power on the phone. Again, I'm not much of a benchmarker. I don't think phones or tablets getting benchmark really helps all that much because you don't really buy these to be a power device, but the Snapdragon processor in here makes this darn thing fly. It's very fast very responsive, and that could be a combination of that fast refresh rate display and the 8-core processor, but this feels like one of the fastest phones that I've ever used. Even just downloading a quick game to try this out, the app loads almost instantly, and the game itself plays without a single issue, except that I'm terrible at Mario Run. So the issue is my fault, not the phone's fault. I also really like that this has so many authentication options. Coming from an iPhone, I normally only get Face ID, which is not something that I think can work by itself in the current mask wearing environment. But here in the Z Flip 3, you can do face unlocking, touch unlocking, pins, patterns, all sorts of stuff to unlock your phone or do verifications and authentications with several options inside of those for more secure but slower or less secure but faster unlocking. I'm a huge fan of customization and giving this much user choice here has made walking around and actually using the phone feel just more seamless. And the next thing I've really liked, I've really like. I would go so far as to say I love, which is both one of the best things and one of the worst things about this phone. I love how the integration of Bluetooth mice and keyboards work. It's basically exactly like using a computer. It looks like a traditional mouse and it works like a traditional mouse with all the clicks right and left. When you pair a keyboard, it's very crisp, it's very precise, and it's very easy to just get into like a normal style computer use. When using something similar with an Apple device, you can use a mouse and keyboard, but it doesn't work the same way as their computers, where here it's great. I actually paired a mouse and a keyboard to do a large chunk of writing this script, which leads me to the thing that I dislike most about the Z Flip 3 and it, it hurts so much more because of how good this integration is and how good of a productivity device this phone could turn into. For whatever reason, Samsung does not allow or the Z Flip 3 is incapable of using the Samsung DeX technology. And if you don't know what Samsung DeX is, it's their productivity software with some of their phones and tablets where you plug it into a monitor and the phone basically turns into a little computer. I can't Fam, I can't overstate how heartbroken I am about this because I think the Z Flip 3 could be such a fantastic little productivity device. Maybe even the fantastic little productivity device if it had this functionality. I've tried plugging this into an external display and nothing shows up. I've tried various dongles, different displays. I've tried different combinations of everything and it just doesn't work. Even the $399 iPhone SE 2 can work with an external monitor. This is exactly what I talk about when I mentioned during Apple videos that I like that no matter what device you get, you get the same software functionality across all Apple devices. If the Z Flip 3 could add index, I think this would be one of the best functional work devices on the market period. I've read that the Z Fold 3 does have DeX, but I don't want such a big phone. The point of flip phones for me is to have a very small footprint as much as possible, and then when I need to, 
make it a bigger device. If I just want the bigger device, I don't need the flip phone. That's, it just hurts me. If you do know of a way to make decks work with this phone, please let me know in the comments below. I don't really want to end on a negative though, because I do actually really like this phone. So the last thing I want to talk about, and the last thing I've liked, is the overall construction of this device. I've heard that previous models of the phone have had quality control issues, from hinges to displays to all sorts of problems. And in fairness, I've only had this for a couple of days, so maybe we will see some issues while using this phone. But in the past couple of days, this has felt remarkably robust, and I haven't had any concerns about the overall build quality of this phone. It feels incredibly high quality. All the buttons are clicky, the screen folds great, everything just works so smoothly. But at the end of the day, so what, right? After some initial use, would I recommend the Samsung Z Flip 3? I don't know. I don't know, I have a hard time recommending expensive cell phones because they all really do the same thing. I recommend the iPhone 12 Pro Max because it has substantial battery life that puts it as a very reliable work phone for those of us that do not have the time to micromanage specific pieces of tech throughout the day. But this is more of a cool gadget than what I would consider to be a work device. If Samsung adds that DeX functionality, I think this could straight up be a phenomenal little tool that would allow working professionals to basically leave the tablet or laptop at home when plugging this into a dock, allowing for computer-like use. But it doesn't have that, so I have to treat this as just like a cool G-Wiz phone. So if you want a cool G-Wiz phone and don't mind Android, I would say go ahead and get this. It's been a lot of fun to use. The screen is beautiful. The construction feels solid. I'm having a blast with it. So if you want to have a fun piece of technology, yeah, go ahead and go check this out. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's so easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style, and brings your ideas to life. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head on over to squarespace.com slash everydaydad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.